Good morning, church family, friends, uh, anyone else who's tuning in. Uh, we are so glad that you're able to join us today for our next session of People with Purpose, where we are studying through the New City Catechism. And I know Pastor Travis touched on this last week, uh, but the New City Catechism is, uh, uh, you know, I think, uh, like he says, a lot of people hear that word catechism and it kind of turns them off or makes them question what's going on. Uh, but what this is all about is us deciding for ourselves what it is we believe and understanding why we believe it. Uh, as a student pastor, uh, this happens often uh, that students will pick up the beliefs of their family. Uh, they'll even maybe pick up my beliefs because I'm the one teaching sometimes and and uh, they'll run with those, and then whenever they leave student ministry, or whenever they leave the home, uh, they begin to come against opposition. And those beliefs that they had built on a foundation of someone else uh, be begin to waver, and they begin to be rocked from all sides. Uh, a lot of times, students in those situations will walk away from the faith as they're persuaded to join some other belief system or maybe even walk away from a belief system altogether. Uh, now, whether or not they come back to the faith, uh, whether or not they uh, get back into the ministry of the church uh, is, is something that, that, as far as I'm concerned, uh, it matters, but it matters less than whether or not they actually believe what they say they believe. That's what the New City Catechism is all about. So we're looking at 52 questions, uh, just scripturally based off of things that are, are uh, uh, the basic belief systems of us as believers. We find these in scripture, we find these in, in, uh, in uh, the Word of God, and, and that's just part of who we are as believers. And so we have to decide for ourselves, what is it that we believe? And why do we believe these things? And so 52 questions. And I don't know about you. Uh, I, I know that we have to take this with a grain of salt. I know that we have to use this in moderation uh, because otherwise it will take over our lives. But I am thankful for technology that has afforded us the opportunity to come together during this time. Uh, you know, in March, whenever everything kind of closed down and we were taking a lot of time away from one another, as was recommended for us, and we began to worship online. Things were so different, radically different, but I was so thankful for the technology that we had in order for us to gather together across the town of Blanchard, outside of Blanchard. People from all over were tuning in and joining us as we worshiped together, and that's what the church is all about. We don't have to be inside of a building to worship, but we have to tune our hearts to worship, and so I'm thankful for the opportunity that we have. Since we're not going to be meeting on Sunday evenings for some time, we're not sure what that looks like. Wednesday evenings, we're not sure what that looks like. Uh, continue to join us on Sunday mornings if you're able physically. If you're not, join us online. Facebook is a great way to join us as well. But in the meantime, this is a great opportunity for us to join together for people with purpose, students with purpose, kids with purpose, as we look at what it is that we actually believe why we actually believe those things. So we're on question number 19 this week. And here's the question. I'm going to read the question and the answer, and then we're going to talk about it for just a little bit. So bear with me. Question number 19, uh, is there any way to escape punishment and be brought back into God's favor? You see last week, question number 18, we learned that we are all under the punishment of God because of who we uh, are, what we are. We're sinners. Uh, each one of us has fallen away. We've learned about sin. We've learned about what God is. We've learned about um, uh, the punishment that comes along with sin. And, and we know that God is a just God and he cannot allow sin to go unpunished, um, which was question number 18. But question number 19 says, is there any way to escape punishment and be brought back into God's favor? Which is a great question because if we leave it at all sin must be punished, I... I'm not going to speak for you because you you all, you who are watching this video, you are perfect. I'm sure none of you has ever sinned. None of you has ever made any mistakes. None of you has ever done anything that would go against the will of the Father. I'm sure. So I'm just speaking for myself here, maybe. 
Is there any way to escape punishment and be brought back into God's favor? I sure hope so. Because if not, I'm in trouble. And I might as well just pack everything up and say I'm done with this Christian life because if there's no way for me to be brought back into the favor of the Father, the Creator, the one who loved me, then I might as well just give up and stop trying. Because if there's no way to be brought back into his favor, I have no hope. It's pointless. This life has no meaning. Family doesn't matter anymore. Work doesn't matter anymore. Enjoyment of things doesn't matter anymore. Because there's no way to be brought back into God's favor. But here's the answer to this question. We'll back it up with scripture. The question, is there any way to be now is there any way to escape punishment and be brought back into God's favor? The answer is this. Yes. To satisfy his justice, God himself out of mere mercy reconciles us to himself and delivers us from sin and from the punishment for sin by a redeemer. Thank God that there is a way that we can escape this punishment. Because listen, this punishment that we deserve, this punishment that is over our heads before we give our lives to Christ, is a, a weighty punishment. It is a weighty judgment to know that the sin of man is on me. My sin is on me. Not the sin of all men, but the fact that I am a man. And the fact that I sin, and if you're a lady out there, the fact that you're a woman, the fact that you're a creation and you sin, it is a weighty judgment over our head and it weighs us down. And there is no way we on our own can escape it. And you can see that in the end of this answer here. Yes, to satisfy his judgment, God himself out of mere mercy, we'll talk about that here in a minute, reconciles us to himself and delivers us from sin and from the punishment for sin by a redeemer, one who would be able to purchase us away from sin, one who would be able to purchase us away from this judgment, one who would be willing to go in our place and redeem us, buy us back, purchase us, pay the debt that we owe by a redeemer, not by man, by a redeemer. Look at this verse, Isaiah chapter 53, verses 10 through 11. It says, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. That is our Redeemer. It was the will of the Lord to crush him. He put him to grief. His soul made an offering for guilt. I don't understand that kind of love. I never have. I never will. But like I said, that is our Redeemer. He is the one who loves us. He is the one God, the Father, created us. And he saw fit to send his son to die in my place. He can't allow sin to go unpunished, but he didn't want to punish me. He chose me. He chose you. He doesn't want to see us be punished. He doesn't want to see us fall by the wayside. So... He sent a redeemer. He sent someone to stand in our place to take the punishment for our guilt. It's amazing the love that he has for us that I'll never understand. And I'm sure you could fall into that same category, but uh, it's, it's very, very uh, humbling to know that a just God who will not allow sin to go unpunished is also a loving God who will redeem his creation. Look at this. Where uh, Jonathan Edwards is one of the commentators that this New City Catechism goes towards and lists in the book, which, by the way, if you don't have the book, you can come by the church office. Just let us know you're coming. We have a few left. You can pick it up. Also, the New City Catechism, it's on Google Play Store. It's on the App Store. Download that app. It's totally free. 
And so we, uh, we want you to be a part of what we're doing. And sometimes that means having extra resources. Uh, but uh, Jonathan Edwards, this is what it says. Even when he was under his last sufferings, those utterable and unparalleled, those unutterable and unparalleled sufferings he endured from, from his tender love and to pity us, there also the hateful nature of our sins is manifested in the most affecting manner possible. As we see the dreadful effects of them in what our Redeemer, who undertook to answer for us, suffered for them. And there we have the most affecting manifestation of God's hatred for sin and his wrath and justice in punishing it. As we see his justice in the strictness and inflexibleness of it and his wrath in its terribleness in so dreadfully punishing our sins in one who is infinitely dear to him and loving to us, so has God disposed things in the affair of our redemption and in his glorious dispensations revealed to us in the gospel as through everything or purposely contrived in such a manner as to have the greatest possible tendency to reach our hearts in the most tender part and move our affections most sensibly and strongly how great cause have we therefore to be humbled to the dust that we are no more affected. Listen, we are no more affected by the sin that's in our lives. We're not under the weight of that judgment anymore. For those of us who have given our lives to Christ, we're not under the weight of that judgment anymore. We are out of its effect because God, the Redeemer, sent Jesus, his son, the perfect sacrifice to stand in my place, to give his life in my place. So, is there any way to escape punishment and be brought back into God's favor? Yes, to satisfy his justice, God himself, out of mere mercy, grace, the grace that he has for us, reconciles us to himself and delivers us from sin and from the punishment for sin by a redeemer. And that redeemer is Christ Jesus, his son, the perfect sacrifice for us an imperfect creation, one who would walk away from the one who made us and loves us, knowing that we were still going to be sinners, he sent Christ to die on the cross for us. That's the kind of love that a just God has for his creation. That he would send his son knowing that we were still sinners. That he would send his son to die on the cross for us. Listen, I hope that you're following along with us. I hope that you've been with us from the beginning. If you haven't been, download the app, get the book, go through questions one through 18, and then watch this video again. To understand where we are, where we stand as human beings without relationships with Christ, without uh, uh, accepting the love of the Father and His grace, where we stand as creation, where we stand as uh, fallible men and women, Understanding the justice of God and still knowing his love for us should bring us so low. It should humble us to the point uh, where there are certain times when we just can't even stand up because we've fallen under the weight of the, the, the debt that we owed that God paid for us, that Jesus' death on the cross paid for us. Is there a way to escape punishment? Absolutely but only through Jesus Christ. If you've not accepted him today, if you've not accepted that love today, scripture says that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I want to encourage you, if that's you, if you're watching this video and you're under the weight of sin right now because you haven't began your relationship with Christ, reach out to us. Call the church office today. Email one of us. Let us know. Find a friend who you know is someone who knows about the gospel. Give them a call. Have them walk you through this. Listen, it's not uh, about uh, a recitation of words or saying this certain thing. Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. If that's you today, if you need to begin your relationship with Christ so that you can be purchased by the Redeemer, so that you can be unaffected by the sin any longer, I want you to reach out to one of us. 
We love you, church. We look forward to seeing you again very soon.